Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps, and welcome to part three in our series covering all of the basics of Swift Free. In this video, we will take a look at functions. So let's jump straight into Xcode. Okay, so in Xcode 8, we want to get started with a playground, and we will call this functions. Save it somewhere nice and safe, and we will get rid of this string so that we have a nice blank playground. So what is a function? Well, a function is a block of code that is going to perform a certain task. We can then simply run this function or call this function when we want that task to be achieved. So a real life example of this might be in a game. We would have a function to lose a life and every time the gamer would lose a life, we would simply call that function. So let's set a function up. We will start by saying func, short for function, and we will give this a name. So we will call it say hello. For now, we will do empty brackets, and you will see why these are important in just a few moments. We will then do an open curly bracket to start a block of code and drop a line. So we have said func to say that this is going to be a function, and it has a name. Now any code between these curly brackets will run when we call this function. So when we run this function or run this block of code. So this function's task is to simply say hello. So we will say hello. Now when we call this over here on the right, it will print hello. It's still saying hello playground from that string that was there a moment ago, but don't worry about that. Now to call this function, so to perform the task that this function is doing, we will type the function name. So say hello. As you can then see, we're now getting hello over here because this block is running. Okay, so we have set up a function, which is a block of code to do a certain task. And in this case, that task is to simply print hello. So the code between the curly brackets is a code that's gonna run when we call say hello. So that's the most simple use of a function, just to simply run a block of code. And we could run that over and over and over again. You know, we could say, say hello three times, and as you can see, it has now run three times. So it's done this three times. But just saying hello, I mean, it's cool, it's just a bit limited. So we can take this a little bit further by adding parameters to a function. So let's make a brand new function, so func, and this will be to say hello to a user. So say hello to user. Now this time, we won't just do empty brackets. Instead, we will say here that to run this function, we have to pass information into this function. So we want to pass in a user's name to say hello to. So we will give this a name, which in this case, bizarrely is actually name and we will say what type this is going to be we'll do an open curly bracket and drop a line now when we have some parameters within the brackets we're saying only let us run this function if we pass it a string we can then use that string in this function by using name so this time what we can do instead of just saying hello we can say hello and then we can add to the string with name. So as you may remember from part one, when we looked at variables, a backward slash and a variable name in brackets means take the value of name and add it to this string. So we're saying take the value of whatever name is and say hello and then whatever that value is. What is the value in name? Well, it depends on what we pass into the function. So. Let's set that up and then it should be a little bit clearer what's actually happening. So just like above, we have to say the function name. So say hello to user. Now this time it's gonna ask us for a string. It's asking us who we want to say hello to. So to run this, we have to pass in a string. So what we're doing is saying run this function and we're gonna pass it a string as it needs a string. We set up here, only run this function if we're past the string. And then within the function, we're using that string to customize what that function is actually doing. So it's taking this information that we're passing up and using it. So as you can see, it's saying hello, Matt. But if it wasn't Matt, if it was someone else, it would say hello to that person instead. Okay, 
So we're taking this information that we're passing up and we are using it in the function to change what the function is doing ever so slightly. Now, as you can see, the name that our function uses to store the information that we have passed to it is the same as what the function asks for when we try to run the function. So in the function, the string is called name. And when we try to run, say, hello to user, it asks for a name. Now, sometimes it makes life a lot easier to have an internal and an external name for this information. So imagine we have this function somewhere else entirely in our app, okay? And someone else is using our code and they've gone to run, say, hello to user. And they're sort of expecting to pass in a user and it's asked them for a name and it's sort of thrown them a little bit. So what we can do when we set up the function, when we set up this name here, we can give it two names. So with a space in between. So we now have user and we have name and it's still of type string. So what this is doing is, this is saying within this function, refer to this string as name. However, when we try to run the function, instead of saying name, say user, uses external name. It runs exactly the same and it can just make life a lot easier when it comes to setting up and using your functions, especially on big projects. Now I know in this case, it made sense. We could have easily kept it a name, but I hope you see the point I'm trying to make. We can have internal names and external names to hopefully make your use of this function as smooth as possible. If you wanted the external name not to be there entirely, if you use an underscore, when you try to run the function, it will just give you a space to pass the information. So with an underscore as the external name, there just wouldn't be an external name when you call the function. So that is how we can pass some information into a function to change the task that that function does ever so slightly. If you wanted a function with more than one parameter, so passing in more than one piece of data, all you would do once you've set up the first parameter, so you've given it a name and said what type it's gonna be, simply do a comma and add your second one, another comma, your third one, and so on for as many parameters as you want. And using these parameters, we can actually have a massive impact on what this function is doing. But sometimes just passing information into a function isn't enough. Sometimes we want the function to do a task and then give us some data back. So an example of this would be, we could pass a number into a function, it would then do a calculation on that number and return the result. So let's check that out, how would that work? So let's have a real usage for this rather than just saying hello to users. What we're gonna do, we will set up a function and we will pass this function a number in kilometers and it will convert that to miles for us. Okay, so we will say func convert km to miles. So convert kilometers to miles. So for this, we'll pass in kilometers as a double. So it will have a decimal point. Once we've converted it to miles, we will pass it back. So we will do an arrow and say we will return a double. So now not only are we asking for data in the form of a double, so a number with a decimal point, we're saying this function will send back a double. So let's do our calculation. So we'll say let, we will call it miles, and this will equal the kilometers that we passed in times 0 0.621371. I did not just read that off Google, I swear. So this will take whatever we passed in and it will convert it to miles. And we will then return miles. So we're using the keyword return to send back our result. So this function will take the data that we passed in and it will convert it into miles and it will then return the result. Then what we can do to use this, we can set up a variable or a constant and it will equal convert km to miles kilometers five. So what this is doing now, we are running the function convert kilometers to miles and we're passing in 5.0, so five kilometers. That's what this function has asked us to pass in. This function has then taken this, it has done the calculation and it has returned the result and set that to five kilometers in miles, which is just over 3.1. So what we've done, just to quickly recap, is we've now run this function by passing in five kilometers, it's done the calculations, returned the result, 
and we'll set that to this constant five kilometers in miles. And that is how we can use functions to do a task for us and to give us back some data or some information. If you wanted to get back more than one piece of information, you can do so with a tuple. So there's one more thing that I want to quickly show you and introduce you to when it comes to functions, and that is scope. So what is the scope of a function? Well, let's set up one more function. We just call it example function. Now in this function, we will declare a brand new variable. Okay. Now in this function, we can use this variable just like normal. So we can change the value, we can add to it and so on. And this would all happen if we run the function. So this variable is working like normal. However, if we try to use this variable outside of the function, we can't do it because it has no idea what my int is. As you can see, it says use of unresolved identifier my int. So it doesn't know what my int is. And that is because if we declare this within this function, this variable can only be used in this function. So it is in the scope of this function and we can't use it outside of this function. However, if this was declared outside of the function, we can use it within the function and we can use it outside of the function like normal. Okay, so anything we declare within a function can only be used in that function. So sometimes that's all we want. So if we only wanted to use that int in that function, then that's fine. But if we wanted to use this int in other places outside of this function, then we would have to declare it outside of this function. And that is a quick introduction to the scope of functions. Scope can be a factor in lots of different areas in code. So this is not just to do with functions, but we can look at that more when we look at different areas of code later in this series. So that rounds up our look at functions. If you have any questions, post them down in the comments. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching. If you liked watching this video, which I really hope you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.